Hey, we're live. Hey. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome back. Uh, we're here for another Beaver Dreams, and I have some of my usual guests with me, Alex. Hello. Lady Cello. Hello. Andrea. Hi. Ooh. And, me. <laughs> and this month we read Goddess of Spring by PC Cast and Darkest Kiss by Gina Showalter, although not all of us read all of the books, so that's going to make it difficult. It'll be fun. Yep. So, which one do we want to start with, guys? I, I really do want to start with Darkest Kiss, just because I have the most to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> the most to rant about it. Oh, oh rant oh. is a good word. I think yeah. that's YouTube in the background. I have to pause it. Uh-oh. Okay, I could I could hear it in my headphones. Thankfully, I just I had usually mute it and run it in the background so I can see if things come up. Well, it's not running. I usually just put it and then let the comments happen separate. Where did you go? There you went. Okay. Sorry. For a second I thought it was going to echo to everybody and then I realized my headphones were on. <laughs> okay. So, starting with Darkest Kiss, uh, what was everybody's general thoughts? I want to start with the people who didn't finish reading it. Okay. Did you finish reading it? Did everybody yes. finish reading it but yeah. me? Oh, okay. I read about a page and a half, maybe two pages, and then thought, ah, this is, reminds me of the Nina Bangs book we read, only not funny or interesting. No. I read this book before, and so I just stopped reading it. No, Nina Bangs got so bad, it got funny. This yes. one never even reached that point. This one did not get to the that's, funny. That's exactly what I was thinking yesterday. Lady Cello, I was um, I was thinking about how I was going to describe it, and I was thinking it was like, you know when you have those B-horror movies that are so bad mm -hmm. they're funny, and you'll watch those, and you can make jokes? That was our Nina Banks book, which is why it, a lot of us ended up giving it two or three stars, because it was actually enjoyable. It was so bad. And this one, I was just groaning in the first two pages, and I'm like, this is, there's, I'm not, this is not going to get better. I'm just like, this is just one of those ones that are just so bad they're just bad. So I couldn't do it. That's that's it. <laughs> it looked like it was the same story as the one we read. Like it was gonna be the same thing. Go, somebody else. <laughs> gonna, Alex. Me? No, 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 no. Oh, you want to go last, Alex? I do want to go last. Okay, we'll give you the final okay. word. Okay. I'll go since I'm already since my mouth's already open talking. I'll just go <laughs> ahead. Um, I yeah, I know I didn't like it. I did not like this book at all. I thought the characters were... Um, okay, so I guess what's what's her face? Uh, yeah, her. Anarchy. What's her name? I don't remember. Anya. That's how much... Anya. Okay, oh, Anya. Uh, oh, Anya. that reminds me. Okay, I read more than two pages. I read the prologue when it was the guy, and yeah. then it switched to the girl, and I was just like, ugh! Yeah, Lucien not and again. Anya. So uh, Anya, yeah, no, Anya, I... No. Just I, she's so she was incredibly annoying, not very well developed. Um, I had pretty much no sympathy for her whatsoever. Whenever like she was being chased, like whenever Lucien was trying to chase down and kill her, um, <laughs> the guy who she eventually who she loves is trying to chase down and kill her, but yet she can't stay away from him. Um, and then Lucien is just your typical uh, like. Uh, your, I guess your typical alpha male uh, in a romance novel, and just absolutely terrible, jealous, possessive, gro always growling all the time whenever <laughs> anyone wants to. He's growling whenever anyone touches his woman, um, even if like they're not, they have no romantic intentions whatsoever. And even if he knows this, he still growls because he doesn't want anyone touching his woman, um, and like. I, I got that there was supposed to be some sort of, like, fun cat and mouse game going on between these two. Like, he's always chasing her, and she's always, like, getting a trying to get a step ahead of him. Um, but it wasn't really fun. It was just annoying, really. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm sorry. I think, I think I just tried to put the book out of my mind so much. Like, I <laughs> hated it that much. Um, I'd have to go back to my how I reviewed it to actually try to remember 
what I said well, about I it. I should do the same thing because I actually yeah. wrote something. I think I wrote something too. You oh, guys there want was... me to talk while you're doing that then? Yes. Yeah, please do. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. I thought this was was it was an interesting book. I think what got to be about about this book is I thought that the concept for it was really really great. I really liked the idea that the concept was all right. Yeah. Yeah, you know that you had these these immortals and they you know it opened Pandora's box and now they had to house these demons and stuff. And I, so I thought that premise was really really great. It just it all went downhill from you know, from there. It was just it was awful. It was full oh, yeah. of so many awful tropes. Oh yeah, here um, it was. Yeah, and, the, and, the, you know, the slut shaming. The slut shaming. Oh yeah, yeah. I yeah. got that. Yeah, well. you have the horrible alpha males. Sorry, I, I've got found my review. So full of, like you said, the worst tropes. So yeah. we've got the horrible alpha males, the ditzy virginal female um, who gets slut shamed for throughout the entire thing. Uh, coercion, rape, a convenient ending, and some homophobia thrown in as well. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it it touched a lot of bases. It really, it, yeah, a it lot really of, you did. know, it covered it, a lot. But of the thing is, what got me about it is it was a lot of it. You could see how hard the author was trying to make it sexy. Oh. Um, like, and it just wasn't. It just, yeah. it was just so not sexy. Like, really, like the sex scenes were great, and we're gonna talk about that later. I thought the sex scenes were well written, but because you, you just hate, yeah, hated everything else about the book, it just it, wasn't quite enough. You know? Yeah, if you can dissociate oh. the lead character's personalities, uh, yeah. like, if you can just forget their personalities while the sex scenes are going on, sure, they were great, but, well, not yeah. great, but they were good, they were good. But, but that's it. Like, I, yeah. I thought it was going to be a really fun, enjoyable read, and it actually made me think of Alex when I first started reading it. Because, um, you know, it was something that Alex... <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering why. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Sorry, my headphones are falling off. Um, it was something that Alex has said last month, you know, about when you when you get that that kind of romance book where you know you get your glass of wine and you're sitting in bed and you're having a little giggle to yourself and you know. And I thought it was going to be that kind of book because that's the kind of book book I you know that I was hoping that we would read. And it did start out like that, but oh man, it just it just went downhill. It just all went downhill from there. Like <laughs> like. I mean, it really, it really went downhill fast. <laughs> um, but yeah, so overall, I gave it a one star for for a concept, but mm -hmm. everything else just, yeah, you know. Do I get to Over say to you, a Alex. Words you now? get to go ahead. We're done. <laughs> so I I summed the entire book up into two words, which was rage and hate. Um, um, there was a there's there's been a recent <laughs> spread of an internet term that I've seen a lot re that a lot lately that I really like, which is kill it with fire. Um, I I absolutely. This is one book you would burn. This is one book that I I I I wouldn't burn all of them because it's a person's choice whether or not they like a book, but I certainly would would happily torch it. Um. If it wasn't the, electronic. <laughs> if it wasn't electronic, yeah. Okay. Um, the biggest problem I had with the book uh, in general was that I, f um, after reading it and hating it as much as I did, I immediately called up a female friend of mine who does like uh, romance novels and reads them fairly often, and I told her the most basic premise of the book, and her immediate reaction was, oh, that sounds so romantic. And I went... No, it doesn't. It sounds like a man who would be locked up in, in prison for beating his wife. Like, that was my immediate reaction. Yeah. Like, this, is, this is exactly those guys who become spousal abusers or, you know, get into domestic violence of some form, whether it be verbal or physical. Like, it's, it's, it was every single key trait of a guy who should never actually be around a woman. Oh yeah, yeah. Like this, taking hostages on a plane, kind of crazy. Like, yeah. and, and and this was supposed to be a romance book, and it it I hated it so much that I was raging to everybody yes. when I was reading this book. Yes. <laughs> about how bad this book was. But this this book is why romance novels get such bad shtick, is because mm -hmm. of books like this. Um, you know what I mean? You, like, it, yeah. it just, I mean, I, and yeah. the, the main characters were unlovable in every way. Um, some of the support characters were kind of interesting, and I liked them. 
most of the concepts of the of the book itself I hated as far as the main storyline went and the only thing I really cared about at all was a few of the subplots that were hopefully going to turn into additional books within the series but this book itself I just absolutely could not stand so yeah anyway so that's my basic review of it well, uh, I I just found my comment, and my comment. Uh, the other thing I said besides I can't, I already don't like this. It reminds me of Nita Bangs. Was that it's unnecessarily wordy, like right even in the first like five six pages that I had read, it was super unnecessarily wordy, to get the point across. Did, what, was it that way throughout the whole book? Uh, I don't remember I don't being. I don't remember being unnecessarily wordy. I yeah. found it, but I also only read it in about thirty six hours. So, yeah, no, I, I never, I never thought of it as being wordy particularly. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't think. Find... Let me see if I can find a phrase. <clears throat> uh, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't have my copy anymore. I sent it back to the library. I could not get it off my e-reader fast enough. <laughs> I know. I still got it on here. I feel really dirty. Mine, mine's still on yeah. here. Yeah, mine's, mine's only on there because uh, if for any reason I actually had to refer back to it, it made it easier. But yeah, well, hopefully yeah. I have no need to refer back to it because I remember the vague things that pissed me off the most, and that's really all I need to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah I, I looked at it to write down a couple of page numbers for different things. But... Yeah, I don't know, just in general, it had like extra <laughs> words that it didn't need. I can't find anything specific, and I guess I only read four pages. It also, had extra, so. it also had excessive use of pet names that we also didn't need, like Flower. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, that's yes. I was into that with characters. I was going to get into that with characters. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which okay, I think well, we're moving we'll on to characters. next anyway. We'll do characters next. Uh, I have very little to say on the characters. So, the, character, yeah, and yeah, Amanda I didn't already like mentioned them. that they were flat. <laughs> yeah. I didn't get them from the get-go, uh, um. but as soon as I saw the name Anya, I couldn't help but think of Anyanka. So at first I wanted to imagine her from Buffy. Uh, okay. I'm but, trying to remember her. It's been a long time since I've seen Buffy. But she wasn't good enough to be her, so. She um, was the one who was the demon who ended up almost marrying Z uh, Xander. Oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah. Who always said whatever she was thinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, know yeah, yeah. 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 So I wanted to imagine her and... And the character just wasn't cool enough, so I was just like, ugh, no. <laughs> so, I, I had two issues with the characters, um, beyond the fact that I just thought they were terrible. Uh, I had the issue with uh, Lucian uh, being so incredibly shallow that he thought that no woman would ever like him because he was horribly scarred. Right. Um, oh, that was so tedious. And he thought that Anya was, like, Or did that come like, up repeatedly? Yes. Oh, oh okay, well, yeah, throughout the whole book. Yeah, he just couldn't believe that any woman would actually be interested in him. And he purposely scarred himself so that women wouldn't be interested in him because, you know, the only thing women care about is how you look. Um, yeah, he was angsty like a teenage girl. I mean, it was... Yeah, yeah he had a little bit <laughs> yeah. of psychological issues. He really needed a therapist, actually. Yeah, um, yeah. He really did. He needed professional help. And the yeah. problem I had with, uh, with Anya... Uh, with Anya um, the biggest problem I had with Anya is she was she was written in to be like this super cool, you know, like better than everyone else type character. You know, she could you know she could avoid whatever Kronos uh, at, with ease, and you know could you know you know watch people from a distance and could get out of every lock and whatever else. And she had you know these supposedly badass fighting skills and all that type of stuff. But she was a whiny little bitch. <laughs> she yeah. was just annoying. Yeah, yeah. She wasn't super cool at all. She was she was that that um that rich girl cheerleader in high school that thought she was better than everyone else, but had such low self esteem that she had to make herself seem better than everyone else because it was the only way she felt good about herself. Yeah. That was exactly who I saw her as, and it just bugged the heck out of me because there's nothing real about that type of character. No, well that that's it. It's like Gina Showalter. It's like she she was because I get that Anya is supposed to be like this super strong woman character, mm -hmm. but she was only 
only the only way that she was strong in the sense that she could physically kick your ass. But the, the author, she just took this character, tried to make a, st a strong woman, and just totally infantis infantilized her. Um, you know, because like like Alex was saying, like the way you know, just she's like a stroppy teenage brat, and it just all these things that that the author tried to add in to make her seem sexy just made it her seem just basically really desperate. Mm -hmm. And 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 kind of pathetic, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and a really bad representation of women, I thought. Um, and just like, and you know, of course, it was it was a, the, that tired old oh the virgin slut trope. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And yeah, I had the slut shaming it, and then yeah, well, that's it. Yeah, and then and then there's this. Well, how can you be a virgin slut? Oh, because well, no, her mother was a slut. You have slut. to be one or the other. You can't be both. I don't understand. Her, her mother was a slut, therefore she had to be a slut too, as far as everyone was concerned. Yeah. yeah, and it's but 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 also as well like there was this she was constantly overstating just throughout the entire book oh, how how independent she was and how you know her freedom and, and all that and I, I mean I I get that the reason the author did that was to make the ending you know where she gives over the key and and just gives everything up to save Lucian is supposed to be all the more meaningful because but it it just wasn't it was just tedious and then it just. And the, oh. and the fact that, she, yeah, she kept talking about how free and how independent she was, and then all she ever did was follow this guy around everywhere he mm -hmm. went. She, she that's it. Like, she, she was practically riding around on his face for the entire book. Yeah, it like, was so bad. Oh. No, that's just what she wanted to do. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> Your choice well, of words, Andrea, on his face. Sorry, I... I, yeah, sorry. I was trying to make it not crass. <laughs> yeah, that worked better than riding his back the whole way through the book, which would have been slightly less crass, I think, possibly. Oh, right, yeah, but less accurate. <laughs> but No, it was, and, and the, yeah, and the pet names were annoying as hell. I mean, I yeah. don't know any guy who would be interested in being called Lucy to someone yeah. he'd never met before. Or, or flowers, flowers yeah. all the time. Yeah, we never did figure out why he smelled like guy? roses, right? Yeah, yeah, he smelled like roses, so she kept calling him flowers, and I don't think yeah. we ever figured out why he smelled like roses all the time, no. did we? No, it was never well, mentioned. Yeah, if, if he, okay, uh, I'm just going to make a shot in the dark here. If he's deaf, funerals and graves get lots of flowers. Yes, but do, are they always roses, and does he have to smell like roses? I never really go. They shouldn't to be grave. always roses. I don't think they should. I think they're probably usually not yeah. roses. He doesn't go to gravesites though. Like he escorts no. souls either to heaven or to hell. Which, by the way, someone on Goodreads made a really funny comment about his oh, yeah, um, oh, yeah, about yeah, his yeah, job stats. performance. His yeah, stats. The, the, <laughs> yeah, he's like point zero zero one percent of the actual deaths that he's asked he's escorting as death himself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. His job yeah. performance is pretty shitty. Yeah, he doesn't do a very good job, no. No. Really? <laughs> yeah, he's a terrible Grim Reaper. Um, but yeah, In Nina Bangs, I think the guy had, like, a perfect score. Something like that. He was a busy guy, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, in this, one, in this one, he escorts something along the lines of about a dozen souls over two weeks. Yeah. From and the entire world. Something like that, yeah. Inconveniently, at times when he's trying to get, you know, intimate with Anya. Yeah, generally, yeah, generally during like, sex. Generally he during sex, he blinks or, out, goes or, and escorts. Or important conversation. Yeah, wow. he generally blinks out, goes and escorts some souls, and then he whips right back. <laughs> so. Now that's either meant to be a, an interesting plot device, or uh, or Gina Showalter was just like afraid of writing the sex scenes or the conversation scenes, so she had to jump away to something else. I think it was probably yeah. the former rather than the latter. So you yeah. think it was supposed to be a plot device? Probably. It was poorly done, but yes, I think that was the intent. <laughs> yeah. Because if she was really that concerned about uh, writing you know, the sex scenes and or the conversation scenes, I'd wonder about her gender. Um, but anyway, it's usually, usually more of a guy thing, avoiding those types of things. Um, no, it was, it was just poor. <laughs> I really had no care for them. I did like Paris. Paris was a good character. I, I had some issues with Paris. Uh, yeah. homophobia. Paris. Well, yeah. yeah. Minus his homophobia, but he did seem like he was actually a reasonably interesting character to some degree. And I did have, um, I did feel, uh, uh, you know, a little bit of of, um, of a connection with his 
with the, the, the when he finally figures out that this one girl that he likes is actually like almost seems like she might be the one, mm -hmm. and you know, unfortunately, she dies and all. But you yeah. know, it's like, oh wow, look, a character who might actually have a personality and have a, like a real you know interest in being part of the world and meeting people and having conversations rather than these flat, mm -hmm. pathetic characters that we have for the main characters. I, yeah, and I did have an issue with his homophobia, but. Uh, you know, other than that, um, like he seemed like a much more interesting character in a lot of ways. Now, unfortunately, I think if he was written up as a as a main character, he'd suddenly fall flat like these two. But you know. yeah. yeah, I can only guess that in future books in the series, he probably is a main character. But I'm not going to read to try to find that no. out myself. What you don't want to push yourself through that? No, <laughs> no, I really don't. No. Well, I want to know that with promiscuity. Why is promiscuity up there with violence, wrath, death? You, you uh, because it's the seven deadly sins, and it's one of them. Sin, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah, one of the seven deadly sins. Lust. Yeah. Lust. Lust. Yeah. Yes, that's lust. That's right. Yes, that's it. Lust. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So accepting that, so that's not quite the same as promiscuity, though, is it? And also, well, too. Yeah, it kind of is. But well, death, wasn't, death wasn't actually one of the, the deadly sins. Well, I guess no. it's not really sins. Yeah. There are different demons that come out of... They're the evil things that came out of Pandora's box, right? So, so apparently like, having sex is evil. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah that, that's the point I'm trying to make. Like, why is it up there with, with violence? But, but also, as well, um, if, surely promiscuity would encompass all genders and sexes and mm -hmm. pretty much everything, and, inanimate and, objects... You know. Yeah, and he yeah. did say that when the dean but, was in full control, he had no control over who he had sex with. Yeah. That, yeah. So, that he chose women because it was his choice, not the demon's choice. The demon yeah. just... The de yeah, the demon would go any which way. Yeah. Now, I, I still have an issue with that, because um, if he truly is embodying that, that demon the way he says he is, he really actually shouldn't have those you know, nearly throw up in his mouth type feelings regarding it. But yeah, that's what I, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah, Surely even you'd if you have a, a lot more fluid with your sexuality, wouldn't you? Because you know, you're I, being influenced by this thing, aren't you? So especially if it's been like I I imagine I think I think if I remember the prologue correctly, like thousands of years. Yep, yeah, centuries. yeah, it has been thousands of years, yeah. 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 That doesn't make sense. Yeah, yeah. by this point he would have just given up being homophobic entirely. But anyway. Yeah, well, you, you think he would after the first couple centuries? Yeah, yeah, you would. You know, like I, 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 I know some normal, you know, human beings who are, you know, slightly bisexual and lean very, very heavily towards one sex, but have not hated encounters with the other in the times they've had them. They just and prefer one over the other. Wait, in a regular human lifespan? Yes. Wow. I know, isn't it insane? In like less than it's 40 like... years even. <laughs> and actually it would be even less than that because, you know, you don't actually start getting sexually active till you're at least a teenager. So, you know, 20-ish years, you know. Mm. So, yeah, it's, anyway. Uh... It's one of those, uh, was it, you think she doth protest too much? Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. She just there was a lot of there was a lot of shaking of the morality rod in this book. <laughs> yeah, know. there there actually there was the whole heaven hell thing as well oh. was really like it, it was you know uh, I have a theory. There's heaven and hell, the seven deadly sins, and you're thinking she doth protest too much. Perhaps the writer is a Catholic. And she feels guilty about what she's writing. Guilty at all about writing a romance novel. And therefore, writing a Harlequin romance novel. Well, go to her. Like, yeah. Tweet her and ask her. Go message her. Message her and ask her. <laughs> um, well, just in regards to the heaven hell thing, like the you know there were a couple of times where you know the you know he would escort a soul down to hell. And you know their basic their 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 immediate uh, reaction was is there no redemption? It's like well look at what you did in your life. No, that's it. You're done. And you're, you're thinking well, that's not necessarily true. I mean you know depending on which you know faith you come from, whatever else. There's there's always the opportunity for redemption at some point. It's you know 
sooner or later you're going to figure out you did the wrong thing. And there's always going to be some there's always going to be some room for for negotiation or adjustment. But there wasn't any in this. It was just like, oh, you're good, you go to heaven. Oh, you're bad, you go to hell. It was really the the Very whole and white. way it was. Yeah, it was portrayed. I didn't really. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. That's why when we get to this one, I like the way the un it was perceived. Yes. Yeah, portrayed in this one new, better. Un yeah. When we get yeah. to that book. Yes, when we, we get, get to that this one quickly, actually, because the other one was a much better story. But the it, other one was a much better book. But yeah. I have a lot, lot less rage in that one, so I don't have. So to... I wish so I read it now. Let's move on to world building, then, since you brought up the heaven and hell thing. How was besides it being a very black and white dichotomy? Did they actually get into detail describing either of them, and and how do how do you think they did a job of that? It was there just was... all jumbled up, really. It I, was. Yeah. It was just really poorly done, just really confused and really poorly executed. Yeah. I have no idea actually yeah. what happened with the world building. <laughs> well, what it ha yeah, and like, so, like, Anya, like, she, at some point there was this cat and mouse chase going on between her and Lucien, so oh, she would run so away silly. somewhere. Yeah, she would, she would, like, she had this ability to be able to suddenly vanish and pop up wherever she wanted to, so she would vanish and pop up somewhere, and Lucien would be basically on her tail, because somehow he could, like, sense her, like, signature or whatever, like, or smell her, because she smells like strawberries and cream or something like that. Was, he followed her aura or something. Like, it was, he her, it, yeah, yeah, it was her emotional intention, that's what it was. He followed yeah, her emotions so he, or whatever. He could follow her, because he had the ability to, like, flash himself to various to places on in an instant as well. So they kept, like, traveling all throughout different parts of the world. Like, I think they started in Budapest, and then they make it to, like, the state, and then they go to Switzerland, and then, like, they go all over the freaking place. North Pole, don't the forget Arctic. the North Pole. But I love the North Pole. The actual world. Like, was it supposed to be our world, or our world in the future at all, or... It's our world. Know, it's like it's our world. Current yeah. day, our world, basically. Current day, our world. And there is heaven and hell, but they're not very heavily... Well, heaven's not very heavily... Heaven... Heavily <laughs> described. Bleh. Um, <laughs> no. Basically just clouds and pearly gates and, like, angels singing. And then Hell, he talks about a little bit more being, like, you know, fiery sulfurous pits and, like, he basically, like, flings the bad souls into Hell. Yeah. Um, just, yeah. And just it, you know, you're in there the middle of Heaven fire and, and Hell. Yeah. Like, it's literally, you know, the smell of sulfur and et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. Yeah. It is so straight out of the Bible, it's ridiculous. Yeah, anyway. it's really so, uncreative. So, like, really no world building. Uh, yeah. Not really, no. Nothing really no. creative, no. I think kind of cherry picked bits of consensus from different religions and just kind uh, of. She has an obsession with Hawaii. Oh yes, Hawaii, sandy beaches. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Oh, an obsession uh, with Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the story yeah. slash plot. <laughs> there was much of one. I I summed I it didn't... up in two words already. Anger and rage. Anger and rage. They're in the and first rage. two pages. Anger and rage. But I, that's pretty I, much I, the whole. But honestly, that's pretty much the whole book. Like it yeah. really is throughout the whole thing. It's it's anger and rage. It's either his anger and rage, her anger and rage, or their anger and rage at each other. Pretty much throughout the whole thing. Um, Do they ever you, have mutual you, anger and rage for something else? Yeah, Kronos. They do. Uh, yes. Yay! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and they have uh, a common enemy. Yeah, and and then they have anger and rage sex a couple of times. I was uh, gonna ask that too. That that was actually what I meant when I asked, do they have it together? But, yeah. Yeah. But no, it's it it's but yeah, it's pretty much like throughout the whole book is anger and rage, um, which is good because that's how I felt about the book. So it it kind of sums it up, well, matches well. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, no, it's just it. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot of the book where you're reading it and you really feel good about anything that's going on. Mm -hmm. Like, it's not... I mean, they're killing people, they're chasing each other, they're beating each other up, they're trying to kill each other, uh, they're being told to kill each other, uh, they're being followed by the big nasty who wants to kill them both. Uh, like, there's just... They get these... betrayed by her friend. Uh, yeah. they, they go to seek asylum with her friend and then her friend oh, betrays really? them. Oh, yeah, yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, the promiscuous it's... guy with the vampire. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there was there was a lot of there was a lot of this idea of like. Wait, are you telling no... me vampires are real? Yes, vampires. Apparently, are real yes. No, because okay, because you said it's just present day our time. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, va vampires are real. Yeah, there's some. Okay. She has a friend who lives in what Greenland, and he's shacked up with some vampires or something. Yeah, like that. yeah. But he's also immortal, and um, yeah. Well, vampires uh, normally are. Or do you mean William guy? No, 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 William's no, 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 
Yeah, he's immortal, and the vampires are his like concubines, basically. There was a lot of this idea that, uh, <laughs> that sex that you can have sex with anyone you want, provided you don't have sex with anyone you want, and let the other people who they're involved with know about it, because then you're slut shamed. Um, because there was a lot of yeah, because well, I mean, Terrence is going around having sex with anybody, but he's in body of promiscuity, um, and. Uh, Lucy and Andy are, are trying to have sex with each other because they like each other, and William is just apparently this well-known, uh, you know, slut gigolo. himself, but gigolo, but that's perfectly fine because he does it in his own little space and that. But Anya's mother, who was... Dysnomia. Or whatever. Dysnomia, she was like a semi-goddess? Lawless, yeah. Lawlessness. She was yeah. the goddess of lawlessness. Yeah, she had, she had sex with tons and tons of guys, but most of them were already married, and the, and mm -hmm. she didn't care, and they didn't care. So suddenly she was a slut and they're and terrible and a horrible human being, mm -hmm. um, which didn't really make much sense because it didn't seem to be all that different from anybody else who was considered perfectly acceptable the way they were. Yeah, it was and, weird. And she's not a human being, and if you're looking at like Greek mythology and stuff, all the gods sleep together. So mm -hmm. yeah, no, it, it was. I think it was just because she was a woman, because the guys could sleep with anyone they wanted, and that was perfectly fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, that 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 seems to be a common thread uh, with most mythologies, I think. Yeah, it's very much the double standard there. Mind yeah. you, the mm -hmm. author did kind of slut shame Paris a little in the sense that. So he embodies promiscuity, but she still makes it very clear that he kind of wishes he could have a relationship with only one woman. Um, yeah, the human side so, of him still longs to find the yeah, one. Yeah, so in a sense, she's yeah. still saying even though even though you're you know he's possessed by promiscuity, it's still not okay. You know, you still. Well, um, she didn't say it was wrong. She just said it wasn't necessarily what he actually wanted. He actually, just what? Was, yeah. He basically yeah. does it because if he doesn't get laid, he weakens, right? Like, yeah, he, he dies has over no time power if he Oh, so he's like sex. a succubus, essentially. Yeah. Basically. Sort of, yeah. 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 That's not what I wanted. Yeah. Yeah, so... Like, yeah, uh, but as far as story plot goes, there wasn't much of one. No, it, it, it was just sort of filler between the sex scenes, I sort of sort of thought, anyway. Kind of. Um, and it actually it got lost in that, because they were off to save the world one minute, and then they were doing it, and then they realized they have to go back and save the world, and they are excited by that, and they do it. <laughs> and then, you know, it, it takes, you know, if honest to God, if there, there's, like, the sense of urgency is so misplaced, like... I, I, you know, considering what they're, what they're the objective of their, their big trip and what they're trying to fight for and the things that they're trying to prevent, um, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. The, the other really thing, sure. uh, <clears throat> the other thing that uh, that Bonnie had mentioned, I don't know if you guys watched the broadcast or not, <clears throat> but the thing that Bonnie had mentioned about the book is you could take any of the sex scenes and swap them wherever in the book. Oh yeah, they made it and different. they were the exact same basic sex scene. Like they were written effectively the same way, and everything else. Yeah. It was pretty much a copy and paste of the sex scenes in a lot of ways. Well, which apparently, sorry, um, go finish. You can finish up there. I was just going to say that it, it doesn't it doesn't doesn't make for good sexy times when it's like oh I've read this already. Like are you guys married already? It's become the same thing. Like you yeah. know, like, it's just, there's no originality. There's no. I don't yeah, know. my understanding is with Harlequin, and I mentioned this at the Ottawa Hangout, but I actually, I spoke with someone who had thought about actually um, taking on a job writing Harlequin romance novels, because apparently you can apply for this kind of job. Oh, and yeah, guess, you can. And I guess they have a formula. So long as your story meets these basic requirements, then it can qualify as a Harlequin, hence why a lot of the sex scenes in Harlequin romance novels are essentially the same and the end result is they get married and they're gonna have a baby or something like that or at least yeah. someone in the book has to be married and expecting a baby which oh there yeah, was anyway, that was another Maddox. beef I had with this book too Maddox and is... Ashlyn were expecting a baby so there you yeah, go and that theory stuff. I mean you know what nothing against marriage nothing against having children I think they're all beautiful things but it doesn't have to be the end Game of every, book. every romance Spoke, novel. Spoken as a recently yeah. married woman. I know. <laughs> I know. But it doesn't have to be end game spoken of every by, Spoken by the recently divorced guy, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> With two kids. So. Anyways, anyways it, just, it just seems like, I don't know. It, anyway, that's just my 
either beef with right, it. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I I agree, and that's why I'm you know I I've, I I think that was I just I disliked the book so much because well if, I mean if we're moving if we're moving on through our list it goes right into the next topic which was it it gives people the wrong idea of what romance and relationships mm -hmm. are. The portrayal of this guy who's so jealous no other man's allowed near his woman refers to her as mine, I don't know, something along the lines of two dozen times throughout the book. Italicized and capitalized mine mm -hmm. at least two dozen times in the book. Um, you know, it doesn't want to think about who she's ever touched before or, who, who, or what guy has possibly touched her in the past because it, it enrages him. Um, you know, like they, that, you know, there's nothing romantic about that character. Mm -hmm. But the yet for some... The husband type. Yeah, but yet for some strange reason, in a romance book, this guy is considered romantic because he, you know, he wants to protect her and he wants to, you know, do everything for her. He wants to sacrifice his whole world for her and this is romantic. No, this is... A, a, a mental issue. This is a, a you know, this is a dependency problem. There's some that serious needs to be codependency fixed. going on. Yeah, here. yeah. It needs to be fixed through ther therapy. But the problem is, is in a romantic world, you can write out all the flaws of that character. You can write out all the flaws of that relationship that sh that in the real world would exist in such abundance. It would be a terrible, terrible, destructive relationship. And <clears throat> it frustrates me that that these types of books are written. But it frustrates me more that then I actually know women who think that they're romantic because of these characters. Yeah, well, that's it. It's really not. It's it's creepy. It's 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 a bit rapey, to be honest. Do, 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 you, do you guys remember March from the Sarantha Jacks books, Gr uh, Grim Space and stuff? No, I don't think I've read those. I read Grimm's Face, but I, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been a it's been a while for me too, and I actually ended up finishing the series. But he was kind of like a really lesser degree of all those things, you I'm know. Just and like, to remember, is he the like, lead male? Yeah, he was the lead male who who had telepathy. Oh, okay. I thought he was just like very dark and brooding, but yeah, right. Yeah. But he was he was a little bit on the possessive side. I think I remember, mm. and he was definitely protective of her. Yeah, he's protective. He wasn't. He wasn't jealous, like obsessive, like. No, because it, it's it's yeah. kind of romantic in tiny amounts. Well, but if it ever goes beyond, like that, that's what I think. Like you know, some of those qualities, not all of them, some of those qualities are romantic in small doses. But once mm -hmm. it it gets like up to a couple of milligrams, you're starting to get annoyed with the guy. And then if it hits to like a full gram, you're just mm -hmm. like, no. This this just can't even happen. Yeah, that's when it becomes the together. barbaric me, man, you woman, yeah. I beat you overhead and I drag you back to my cave, right? Like yeah. that's when yeah. that's, and like, that's when only that's only funny if he's doing that sarcastically. Yeah. yeah. Um, you, know, <clears throat> you have a really good healthy relationship otherwise. Otherwise, <laughs> no. No, like, no. Not acceptable. Yeah. There's yeah, a, no. um, yeah, there's there's a problem in the whole jealousy thing because to be in a relationship like a, a long-term loving relationship. You there need has trust. To be, well, there, yeah, you need trust, but there also has to be at least a, a mediocre amount of jealousy in certain situations. There, ha yes, because jealousy comes from from the the knowledge that the person you're with is the person you're going to be with for the rest of your life, and you don't you you don't want something to to end that relationship. You don't want something to break that. So there's there's always going to be that little bit of of you know wanting to keep her keep her or him closer to you in a situation where something may and may may cause a, a, a separation of that of that uh, relationship. But not to the point of growling at other men or uh, you know, or or stopping, you know, a guy from going out with his friends because he might meet somebody, or you know, like there's, there ha you know, the jealousy. There is a healthy level of jealousy in a relationship. It does mm -hmm. exist. It's just rarely written in the right way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I I agree with that. I agree with that. 
I don't know how I feel about that because jealousy was one of the issues I had with my first relationship. But, but it's about, like, like Alex said, though, it's about there's a, a healthy amount, there's a small amount. It's about, it's like an appreciation for what you have, in a sense. Yeah. Like, um, if, and if, a desire to, to, you know, to be able but, to... But is that actually that, jealousy, or is that something else? You know, yeah, like, are we, get, are we think putting the wrong... a better word for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think you're giving it the wrong word, it, you know, maybe. for what you're describing. Maybe, well, maybe but, I'm looking at, but that's but that's my, from my perspective. So that's but, it's relevant to me. Okay, as an example, if I was if I was dating someone now, and I told that woman that I was meeting up with my ex-wife for coffee, just the two of us to discuss stuff, I would expect that, you know, sh that there would be a, a slight pause before she said, "Yeah, that's okay." Like it wouldn't be just, "Oh yeah, sure, not a problem, go ahead." Because there's this, wait, he had a relationship with her before. Like, what is this What is this about? Why does he want to meet with her? What's, you know, like, there has to be some form of, hold a second, hold on a second, why? Before you just say, sure, go ahead. <clears throat> I, I would think, like, that like, would be, that would be I a healthy response. I think you'd expect it, but I, but I don't think, but I don't think it, it, I don't think it's necessary. I think, I think it would be okay if it wasn't there. Depending on how strong your relationship with this other person is, you know. Maybe I don't know. I just yeah. I, I, I certainly I would certainly take a pause if if you know if the if the woman I was dating said that she was meeting up with a with an ex boyfriend or something like that, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to to talk for a couple of hours or something. It's like, well, why? Like, you know, is it you know is, you just like, is there you know if you know if they have kids together or something like that and oh well we, you know we need to deal with you know. Uh, some you know change you know changing dates or whatever or, or we just need to you know or you know or or if I know they're really good friends and they're just chatting then okay that's fine but the first time you hear it you're like well okay if you're not together anymore why do you need to meet up well that's it it's not about not trusting the person it's about you know they've shared up they've shared something you know it's something that you can't you haven't shared with them they shared a part of their life with somebody else yeah. So it's more that you're it's more that you feel sort of for you know jealous of that rather than the person itself. It's just it's an experience that you haven't been able to have, you know that you've not but, had with that person. You're not included in it. It's nothing to do with trust or anything like that. Yeah. But, uh, but at side, least not not in my experience. On the flip side, I wouldn't growl at him. <laughs> no, no, well that's it. <laughs> and grab her and say mine. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh. I think of cavemen whenever you describe it that way. Well, and that's the thing is that's exactly how it. It's a very that's exactly man. how I see it. That's exactly how I was yeah. reading it when I was reading the book. It was just so. It made him very it, unattractive. It really yeah. did. Like it was yeah. really unattractive. It so yeah. um, abusive in a way. Like yeah. it's just, just unhealthy and just gross. Like just anyway. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That's my rant. I think I'm done ranting now. Okay. All right. Aww. I like it when people rant. Me oh, too. I, rant I think it's forever, enjoyable. I, I, I could rant forever, but I mean, we do have to, uh, you know, talk about the other book at some point as well. Oh, yeah. Do you, do you have to let other people talk too. But before that happens, uh, do either of you have something else to say about either the sexy times? Because I'm not sure if we skipped over that or not. I think we... Uh, or the romances teaching thing? Uh, it doesn't teach anything of any value, so if anyone well, wants to learn basically. something from the... It basically yeah. teaches you that you cannot be a mature, uh, well-adjusted woman until you've been penetrated by a penis, is kind of yeah. what it is. And once penetrated by that penis, you then have to stay with that man forever. Yes. Ever. Oh, uh, yes. And you suddenly Real have time. magical powers and no. stuff <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. Like oh, that, it, no it, it how... seems that way in some books. Like the woman is all weak and crap, and then as soon as it happens, you're confident and perfect and wonderful, and everything amazing will happen in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And. Pretty fun. It, and if you're like Anya, no matter how many suckers you eat, uh, was it strawberries oh. and cream lollipops, you will never yeah. get a cavity. <laughs> or gain weight. Or gain or weight. Gain no. weight. Yeah. That's right. You will always be your whatever ridiculously small, perfect body, perfect everything, blah, 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 yes. Yeah. She was eating suckers all the way through the entire book. 
Like, well, I think it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be sexy, though, wasn't it? Yeah. Because no. I, you know. <laughs> no, so she's yeah. a toddler. Oh, so you were talking about her being bratty. You were talking yeah. about all these things. One of you said infantile at one well, point. No, I, I, I said teenager. Said infantile. I was yeah. thinking. I was thinking. I was going to say, oh, like a to like a toddler, like a two year old, and then a man, and then Lady Teller, you said like a teenager, and I was like, oh, oh, I thought you were going to go younger with that. No, <laughs> well, no, it, it's. Sorry, go ahead. Oh no, I was just gonna say teenager. she has elements of both, but she's well, she's like a bratty teenager. But yeah. the whole lollipop thing—I think that was supposed to be sexy. But I mean, eventually it did get replaced with a dick, so that was yeah, you know, good. But like, yeah, it put me off loll lollies for life. <laughs> well, the the problem the problem with that is that every time they every time they mentioned that, the only thing I could picture was like some. Uh, you know, young girl, you know, 14, 15, 16, uh, trying to look old by, you know, st sticking her tongue out and licking candy while dressing in some inappropriate clothes and actually being so self-unassured that she thinks she needs yeah. a guy to complete yeah. her life. It kind of was a very creepy Lolita kind of thing. It though. was. Yeah. Well, they even had her sitting on the swing sucking her lolly, didn't they, at yeah, one point? Yeah, they she did, was, yeah. You know, yeah. having yeah. a swing and... Yeah, it was oh. very creepy. Yeah, it was... It, yeah, it was... It was, it was, it was just... Uh, it, was yeah, just, it was just a terrible book. It was insulting. It was. It was just insulting all around to men and women and just everybody. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why, yeah, got so very, very, very mad at it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then she used the word core for vagina as well. Core? Oh, yeah, that's right. She did. Core. Penetrated her core. Core. That's well, right. Are you sure they I don't mean uterus. Like you went in so far, he got to her core, oh, like her uterus, because that would yeah. make sense, maybe. I, I have an issue with that as well, because <laughs> that is not a pleasant thing. <laughs> and I don't know why they ever write it. I don't know either. It's 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 terrible. It's it's. Because uh, I've seen that before. I've seen that. Like that that happens. She needs to go see a doctor afterwards. Yes. Yeah. So, like, it's it's, it's like, common in Harlequin romance novels. It's a really common word that like, they use in Harlequin so romance. It's just terrible. It gets in that yeah, car, and that's why they always end up pregnant or something. Yeah. Like, yeah well, that's not a healthy thing. It's <laughs> yeah. just not. It's. You need to terrible. go see a specialist at the end of every novel, I think. And yeah. And the fact is, the fact is that ninety some odd percent of guys will never, ever, ever do that anyway. So why make it seem like that's the ultimate in in sex when it's never going to happen? Another yeah. thing that Harlequin romance novels are doing in terms of setting up unrealistic explana uh, expectations for women. <laughs> I read an yeah. article. Um, I I figure this is the perfect perfect spot to bring it up. I read an article that was discussing uh, the dangers of, uh, of 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 porn obsessions for men, oh. and they were saying that it, it creates unrealistic expectations of sex and of relationships when men watch watch porn. They oh said, well, the same could be said for women. Actually, what they were porn. saying is it's worse because men who watch porn logically know that that is not real because they know they can't perform like that and so their expectations are of their own performance and know they can't match that so you know while they still hope that women will act that way um, the expectations are not nearly as bad as women who read romance novels exclusively mm -hmm. and their expectations of what a romantic relationship is like and how guys yeah. act in a romantic relationship because it totally skews what they think guys are supposed to do and how guys are supposed to act based on these romance novels. And it's they're saying that it's, it's like ten times worse to be obsessed with romance novels I, than I to be obsessed with, with porn. I, I, agree I, with I think that. it makes a lot of sense, but I, yeah. I also like, you know, I don't, I, I'm Sure, not all women, because I definitely don't have those expectations, and in fact would not want most of these romance novels to come true. Oh, you know? I, I I fully agree with that. But so, at the same time, most guys know that porn is fake. There are still guys out there, who, some who watch porn and think that women actually act that way. Oh yeah, I yeah. 
That, and that, that's the truth. I've met some of those guys. So, um, correl mm. correlated to that. Never, never in a women. personal relationship, but just gentlemen that I've been talking to at different times. Oh, thank one goodness. Or another. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. So, correlated to that, there are women who read these romance novels and yeah. actually think that guys are supposed to act that way. And that's I totally agree with that. It's, it's like the same with, with films and stuff. It, it really yeah. does set you up for unrealistic expectations of what your relationship's going to be like. Mm -hmm. But, no, I think so. that's a really good point, Alex. Although, I, think that's, that's I, have, really... I do have to point out that if guys were to watch more romantic dramas on their own, they would have a much better knowledge of what to say in the right situations with women to not get themselves slapped. It's say nothing, Alex. That's <laughs> the right thing to say. <laughs> Don't say anything. <laughs> See? <laughs> like that. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I guess that's uh, enough for uh, the first book. Shall okay. we switch? Sure. Let's talk about a book we actually enjoyed. Yeah. <laughs> so let's, we have two viewers. Before we switch books, I'm just going to double check to see if we have any comments okay. or, or questions. <laughs> and or it looks like we rage. don't have any on YouTube. Uh, and nobody has tagged anything for Twitter either. So that's sad. I guess Emily is too busy working to do anything other than watch. Or Hi, listen Emily. Hi, Emily. Hi, Emily. We miss you. Aww. Hey, Pixel. Who's Pixel? Pixel the cat. <laughs> oh. Was that her cat? Yeah. I forgot the cute. name. He was cute. Okay. So, this other book... Goddess of Spring was well, very different. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh. I have one that this compilation has the first two books of the series in it, so that's why it looks a bit different. That cover is very different. It's a very, yeah, it's a very erotic cover. Um, it really I like is. It. Yeah, yeah, it's very nice. <laughs> mm. Um. Uh, so who wants to go first for general thoughts? I don't think I do. I will. I didn't read it, so my general thoughts are that I wished I'd read it instead of Darkest Kiss. Yes, good thought. And that's about all I can Very say. good thought. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll go first since I went last last Congratulations on your intelligence, Andrea. Okay. All right. So, I liked it. Um, I, um, I would have rated it higher, but there was uh, a portion of the book uh, from about... Mm, about chapter five or so, up until about a little over the halfway point, where I, I had a hard time reading it because I found it was a little slow-paced. But um, other than that, I, I really enjoyed it. The story was really, really uh, good. Um, I liked the um, I liked the roles that were. Um, that that were given to the the lead male and lead female they they were um, much more realistic regardless of the whole magical god aspects the um, the level of conversations between them and and the and and the uh, the thought process and the maturity level in that was was much more um, uh, reminiscent of uh, of a relationship between you know two typical adults mm -hmm. rather than being this romanticized idea of what a relationship should be. And I thought it was, uh, I, I really liked it a lot. Okay, I guess I'll go next. Nobody else is talking. Um, is for my general with thought, us? Sorry, she's frozen on the screen. She, nope. Oh, she just got knocked out. I'm ah. going to re-invite her. Uh, and... Uh, yeah, there she is. Come back. So I'm reinviting her, and hopefully she'll pop in as I'm talking. Um, so I, for the most part, enjoyed it. Uh, I thought, you know, overall it was a it was a good book, and I also liked the romancy aspects of it and mm. um, how the relationship grew. Right off the top, I wasn't really into it. I I kind of was off put by, uh, I was kind of off put by the beginning and her character at first, but uh, 
pretty much once she started baking the bread and like dancing around the tree and stuff and getting into like the weird magic baking, mm -hmm. then I was like, okay, she's open-minded enough. Okay, uh, I'll I'll try to get with her. And then I and then from there on, I it was better. And I enjoyed Hades. I I enjoyed Hades, but I kept imagining him differently, like I'm Batman. <laughs> like I I had, and she kept calling him Batman. So that, I had problems imagining that him. That me a little bit. I okay. So my first thought was because he's Hades. I was imagining him like th how they describe Hades in um, the Percy Jackson series, which is kind of Hitler like, like oh, he's no. with manic eyes. Oh, no. So not quite Hitler, like no Hitler stash, right? Mm. But but kind of like a manic a manic skeleton of a man with like really mm. dark, creepy eyes and sh shorter hair in my head. And then, because I think he has short hair in the movies. And then uh, I would flash from that to the actual description slash Val Kilmer. Okay. And, then, uh, and then there was one point where I think I imagined him a little bit like the death guy from the tarot card books, the Arcana Chronicles. Okay. Um, and then... And then I was like, oh, I'm never going to think of him as Hades from the Disney Hercules movie. But there was one point towards the very end where I totally saw him as that instead. And it was just really disconcerting. I have too many different ideas of what Hades looks like. Yeah. So he was just like, depending on what was going on in the scene, he would be a different person in my head. But other than that, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. Um... At times, yeah, I think at times the story was a little slow, but uh, what's the Andrea's last thing I have back. to say? Hi. Hi. Welcome back. Welcome my back. Computer, yeah. My computer is just, it's just crap today. It's just been turning itself off for no reason, so I think I'm going to have to. It's Patch Wednesday. Well, yesterday was Patch Wednesday, so. Oh. Yeah. So if you have automatic updates turned on, it's probably doing its thing. Oh. Boo. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to remember what else I was going to say in general. But mostly mostly I liked it, and it was cute, and it made me happy. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the best novel, but it made me happy. Yeah. It was a very gentle novel. or It like gave me a bit of warm and fuzzies when I was reading it, because it was yeah. a very nice romantic relationship that developed between them, and it wasn't like a you know, an instantaneous infatuation and then they're suddenly in bed together kind of thing. Like, I really like that the characters, like, especially, well, Lena, like, is an older character than your typical romance heroine. Like, she's in her 40s. Yep. She's very self-assured. She runs her own business. Um, you know, she's already been through the ringer with romance and has basically given up on it. So, you know, it's kind of, and she has no expectations for, like, you know, um, you know, oh, I'm going to get married and have 2.5 kids and a house with a white picket fence or anything. She's like, no, nope, you know what? I'm good with where I'm at. Um, and uh, except for the fact that her accountant screwed her over and, you know, she has to try to repay the, uh, was it, pay, repay the IRS, like, however many thousands of dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah, because her accountant screwed over her business. Um, but uh, But I really like that, yeah, she's a very... And she and she comes across as a very mature adult. Um, and I, I do like though that she was open minded enough to cook like a goddess, right? Like cook from the goddess cookbook and like dance around the trees and you know, just try yeah, something I think the different. The wine helped with that one. The wine probably did help with that. She probably oh, I think she sure. had, she had probably drunk a good bottle a, a good whole bottle of was it Pinot Grigio or whatever. Yeah, she, she had done. she had to drink she had to drink most of the bottle. I think that was what the yeah. spell required. Yes, actually and yes. Well, did require it, her to drink it. it. It it was like you know like yeah. put this much in it and then like drink then an entire bottle of wine. Drink all drink the, rest the rest yourself. Well, I not got drink a, all the rest. The recipe. Not all the rest because she had to pour a little bit of the wine right. at the base of the tree as an offering to the goddess. But yeah, yeah. she drank pretty much the rest of it. So right. she had yeah. three quarters of a bottle of wine or something. Yeah. Or um, 
Yeah. yeah. And, but, and then uh, in terms of Hades, I really, yeah, I, you know what? I actually pictured the Disney Hades a few times <laughs> reading this book. Yeah. It was pretty, it nice. was hard not to do that. Like, it right? was really hard not to do that, right? Like, it's I just sort of like. character, though. I like the Disney Hades. He is a good so character. So did I. So he did I. But character. he's not really a romantic character. No, no, no. But I pictured him, like, when he first comes out on the Dread Steed and meets her, like, when she's on the path into, into hate, into the underworld. Mm-hmm. And, um,. And he comes on his dread steed, and she's like, oh, what a pretty little horsey. And he's like, who dares touch my dread steed? That's when I started picturing the Disney Hades, right? Oh, see, right. I don't think I saw Disney Hades until the end when he was yeah. watching her invisible, uh, invisible, like, talking with Apollo. And when he got all angry there. I think that oh, was... Oh, yeah, he got a little... Yeah, he got a little angry That was there. when I was like, oh, yeah. burst into flame, and now he's... Brilliant. But, yes, but then when it was, like, the scenes in the, uh, in the forge, it was like... I, I was trying to think who I would picture him as, but it was very... Those were... I love those scenes, by the way. The those were scene good scenes. Yeah. I love the forge, yeah. He's, like, all... He's, like, wearing barely anything, and he's, like, you know, working at, a, at like, a blacksmith, and he's Ooh. all, like, sweaty, and, like, oh, my God. Oh, it was awesome. <laughs> you, do, you have to read this book. For just for it's those really, scenes it's, a, it's good. It's really yeah, good. Yeah, it's hot. The funny thing is, that's not my favorite scene from the book. Uh, no. <laughs> you don't, you're yeah, not into, I think like, one of my favorite smith, scenes, blacksmiths. <laughs> I think one of my favorite scenes from the book was one of, like, the... I think when she first, like, talked bad at him, or talked back to him at dinner. Oh, yes, at dinner. The first dinner. Yeah, he starts, like, patronizing her, and she just whips it right back at him. So, yeah, that was yeah. perfect. That was, that was awesome. And yeah. she's, like... She's not even really a goddess inside. She's really a person, and she dared to even, like... And I'm just like, yeah, nice. Yeah, she told the Hades. She put him in his place. Exactly. That was yeah. what needed to be done. Yeah. All, I think all of their dialogue was really good, and yes. it was just, like, a nice, sweet build-up. And even though it really only took place in kind of, like, three or four days for her, it was this weird, like, you're in the underworld god-goddess time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because six Whereas months in the human world, it's six months. Yeah. 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 So it's like it wasn't rushed, even though it. Yeah. And you know what? Was. Not to spoil the ending, but I love how like I, and you know what, Alex, you were right. I I kind of teared up a little bit towards. I the shed end. a tear. I, I tell you, I shed a tear. I kind of I was I, like, oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. You guys. I literally, I literally like had like. One or two tears coming down on the end, and I was like, Aww. I gotta finish reading this. And that work. This ending is so beautiful. <laughs> no, I'm upset that I can't remember my initial reaction to the ending. I was actually at work reading this <laughs> and <laughs> trying very hard not to show that I actually had like red eyes and tears coming out from the ending of this book. Yeah. It was, it, but the other, the other scene that I really, really, really loved was when they were when they were watching the two souls get together. Yes, oh, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. the best. I was, Aww. I was reading that, going that, like, and the thing is, is that the thing I liked the most about the book, and I, I, and I did say that it was, it was a bit of a slow build up in that, but what I liked about it was the author took her time to write the things, but she wrote them in such a way that you really could feel like you were there throughout the whole process. And it wasn't. It wasn't this. Like it. 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 And none of the scenes were really unnecessary. Mm-hmm. Um, I found it slow simply because it was. It was. You know, a long process of the two of them talking and getting to getting a, an idea of of where they were and and where she was and everything else, which was neat. Um, but a little bit of a slow build because of the the you know the the interactions between them, but. <clears throat> I really like the fact that like everything, every part of it really did have its purpose. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just you know, uh, you know, like you know when she takes her bath out on the balcony, um, you know it wasn't the idea wasn't to have her in this bath out on the balcony so he could see her naked. It was the idea of her being treated like the goddess she was with this naked bath out on the balcony, and it was only her her um, modesty. That really made the issue of her being seen naked. It, it you know, like if it had been it any other goddess, it was her human modesty. It was the yeah. human side of her. If, if it had been any other goddess, she wouldn't have cared if he had seen her naked. Like yeah. it was just, it, it, but the uh, scene was, was the maiden goddesses would have cared. Mm, okay. Yeah, any but, any of the maiden goddesses would have cared and gotten righteously furious. 
But anyways, I just I but, found that like like the scenes were all really well put together and and, mm-hmm. and anyways I just I but yeah that one part with that one scene with the two souls I I liked the blacksmith scenes <laughs> I thought they were quite good yeah um, I'm not much for a guy in a loincloth smashing <laughs> a hammer against steel myself but I did like the blacksmith scenes um, they certainly had the um, well, there's the just fiery a fiery intensity like... that was intended in them, yeah. and they were certainly mm-hmm. like I could certainly picture it, and I could, being from the other side, um, I could <laughs> certainly see the the appeal of it anyway. Yeah. Um, it just my favorite scenes were more the 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 romancy love. Uh, yes. you know, two I think it, and... I think the two souls meeting scene was one where yes, I teared the, up. I think I actually teared up at that. Beautiful. That was a beautiful yeah. scene. It, it really was. was. And the very end, and the end, the very end. I actually, I also really enjoyed when he shows up at the end in the real world. Yeah, yes. that, like, I teared up a little bit of that too. Yes, that I was up a little bit of that too. That was fun too. So, yeah, it's cute. But yeah, just when I when I read our goddesses come home or come back or whatever, or, you and know, she, our queen has and come she back. will never leave us again. Oh. Yeah, and it was like. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, bless you guys. Oh, uh, uh, I was really shocked uh, when I got, when when she figured out what was happening to her, and she was like, wait, you're going to send me down there for the rape of Persephone? And when yeah. I saw that, I studied Greek oh, mythology yeah. in university, and I was like, what? I don't remember her being raped. I remember her being kidnapped. What? So I actually looked it up on Wikipedia or some or somewhere, and it was like, oh, because rape used to just mean, like, being kidnapped, so... I, my memory of the myth, the myth was correct, and it was just a weird term yeah. for it. I liked how so, she. I liked her use of the myths. Uh, I guess I'm getting maybe because I was kind of expecting here, but, them to switch bodies yeah. back, like maybe right during their first time. Oh. Like, for them to switch souls, and that would be how she's like perceived rape or something. And I was like, I had all these fears of like things that might happen because I do know the myths and. And I was wondering if they were going to ever go back to the other person. And then when they didn't, and they just got to her just kind of like waving and smiling in the little orb in her bakery yeah. at at Lena, yeah. I was just like, I was like, nope, that's enough. I know that the, the place is doing good. That's all I needed. I'm really glad that they didn't have someone be like a teenager in a 43-year-old woman's body because that would have yeah. been annoying to read. Yeah, no. and, and like, she wasn't really a teenager though. That was the thing. Like, well, no. Yeah, that's like, the thing. Persephone that was actually I, was a lot more was, mature. Like, you gotta yeah, give her more credit. Let's just jump into characters right away. Actually, yeah. because I have a few things to say. I really liked. Yeah, I really liked the fact that Persephone was seen as this immature, childlike goddess because she spent all her time frolicking in the fields as the goddess of spring. She should mm-hmm. be. And she basically was living in her mother's shadow. And as soon as she was given the opportunity to be her own person and, you know, to, to just to to live in a world where she wasn't the goddess and she wasn't living in, you know, in her in her mother's shadow and, and she just she had to mm-hmm. make do with her own capabilities, that not only was she quite a capable person, but she took a love to it. She recognized yeah. how much better the world was when she could just be her own person and not yeah. have to worry about who thought what of who. Oh, for sure. Like, oh, for like, sure. It was just when a, she was. Yeah, yeah you know, I, like, I imagine I, I her as that. like a nineteen to twenty year old woman's body, right? Who who was just like frolicking and and it wasn't that she wasn't mature, but it was just that she never really did anything else. She didn't because she always had to, every decision she made always had to go by her mother as well. And right? she used like, to serve banquets to, like... to all sorts of and I, immortals and, I, and stuff um, anyway. So, I mean, to run and plan a banquet, you have to have some level of maturity and planning yeah. and foresight. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, I pictured the mom as Judy Dench. Yeah, that's a good one, actually. That's really um, good. Like, that was... Like... Hmm? De- Demeter? Dench? Yeah. Yeah. No, I don't know what no? Judy Dench looks like. You don't, uh, have you seen any of the recent Bond movies? She plays M. Nope. Oh my goodness. I okay. haven't seen a Bond movie since Pierce Brosnan. I don't think. Oh yeah, no, she's been in all the. Yeah. Was she in the Pierce Daniel Brosnan Craig ones? ones. Yeah, she's well, been in all the. Maybe one Craig after one. Brosnan, the guy in between him and, and Daniel Craig, who had Diamond Face as the villain. I don't know. Um. Anyway, I'm trying to think who else is Judy Dench. Has been in a ton of stuff though. But she yeah, could also be, like, Helen Hunt. 
like an older Helen Hunt, maybe, because she's supposed uh, to have blonde hair. Maybe. I don't. I. I just. I don't see that being stern enough. Like, no, neither just, do I. Um, Judy Dench really has that sternness. That's just it, <gasps> anyway. Oh, Sarah McLaughlin, like when she's in Stepmom. Sorry, Sarah McLaughlin's in what? Oh, not Sarah McLaughlin. Oh, that's not who Sarah I mean. Sarah McLaughlin's a singer. No, Stepmom is Julie. It's Julie. Julia Roberts. Julia no. Roberts, and who's the other woman? Susan Sarah Sarandon. Sarandon. Susan Sarandon. That's what I mean. Um, but if you maybe. gave her blonde hair and straight. Maybe. I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just saw so much sternness in this in this mom, but I, I just yeah. I loved I loved her like she just she was very motherly, but she was still very like you know like these she was the a very this is, this is the way things happen. Yeah. But I loved at the end when she's just sitting there in the in in the in the caf in the little cafe or whatever, and just out of the like just as they're talking, she's like. You know, a goddess can recognize when she makes mistakes or something, and it just goes back to her pizza or whatever, it was, <laughs> or her coffee. Or whatever it, was. <laughs> it was just like, right. you know, it was just, it was, you know, that perfect little mom moment where it was like, you know, you, you yeah. do as I tell you, but I recognize sometimes that I say the wrong thing or I tell you to do the wrong thing, and I, I'm willing to accept that, you know, I'm not infallible. And I, you know, will... you know, who I actually saw uh, as as Demeter. There is there are two or I made an amalgam in my head of two or three patrons that come to the opera who are VIPs. There there are a few women who come who have dark uh, dark gray hair or black hair peppered with white or white hair who are very tall and stately and are our VIPs and they know it and so I could totally mm. like yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's exactly that's exactly how I pictured her. Like it was yeah, just very this, stately woman. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that's why I thought Judy Dench because she's she's got that kind I of. Have to look like, up a picture of her. Uh, hold on. Oh. Um, make sure like, I I just I see her as uh as. as like, oh. But would you have imagined her with longer hair? I know who that is, but I'm trying. I don't know what else she's been in. I've seen her in things for sure. Chocolat, she's been in. That was I a good movie. Remember. I don't yeah. remember her in it, but she that was played. A good movie. Um, I'm trying to remember what her name was in that movie, but uh, she played like um, one of the uh, chocolate sh the chocolate shop's first patrons. Um, I, I, she had a central role in that film. I just tried to remember what her name was in that film. Anyway. Oh wow! I think I, she plays Elizabeth in. I see it as that. I see her as Queen Elizabeth in something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you click on that, I see her as as like. As Demeter. Uh, Actually, I agree with that one. Yeah, for her. Like, okay, with longer hair, oh, but just. Oh, I found her in an old picture from. I screen share this. This is an old picture of her in some kind of Shakespeare, with long blonde hair when she was younger. Let's, where's the screen share button? It's the green button with the arrow. Uh, okay. And then you have to select your screen. I think I mean this one? Yeah. You see it? Yes. That works. Yeah. 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 Like that, yeah. But, but add like 20 to 30 years to her face. Mm -hmm. That works. So yeah. somewhere in between how old she is now and that photo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's a, and that's what I mean. Like she has that that she she has that that stately. She's um, a very regal bearing to yeah. her. Yeah, mm -hmm, and she sure. definitely has that 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 mom not just mom look but um, uh, like authoritarian you know uh, listen to me type look. Yes. So, um, yes. yeah, and as far as other characters go, I really I liked the. I liked the. Um, uh, Eurydice and Iolus or whatever. Yeah, Eurydice. Orpheus, Orpheus and Eurydice. Yeah. No, um, no, not Orpheus. Iolus, oh, uh, or... you mean the um, the da the Damon? The, the Damon yeah. guy. Yeah, I yeah. liked the two of them. Yeah. Was... I, I, but I liked I liked her. She was she was so um, obviously young and and um, and you know innocent in a lot of ways, but. She 
she knew her strengths and she play and she played to them very very well like she immediately took charge and you know and and she uh, you know she recognized what what you know what she was capable of and you know where she needed to ask questions like she wasn't she wasn't the bumbling young kid who doesn't know what the heck they're doing mm -hmm. but she wasn't this uh, you know old soul she she had this 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 childlike enthusiasm for the job, but she was mature enough to know what she could and couldn't do, and and managed it really, really well. Like she just, uh, like it, she really brought a really uh, a fun, um, but realistic character, mm -hmm. uh, you know, role to it. I thought it was really, really well done. And I really um, love the dynamic between Yordaishi and um, and Lena. Like their dynamic, the two of yeah. them. Like, oh yeah, that was just fun. I, it I was just so that. yeah, it was really awesome. Like I mean, Lena, like she, you know, took her took her under her wing, but then at the same time recognized, you know, was able to recognize when to let her do her thing, like let her take charge and let her be an independent. Yeah, and woman. and she also realized like right away when to let her tell her what to do. Yeah, yeah. because she didn't know things about. The and the other thing I liked about it was that she she really they relied on each other so much because. Mm -hmm. She would you you know she would you know she would let her you know when things weren't going right for her she would, you know uh, Lena would let her she uh, you know be you know be be there for her but you know cheer her up and bring her out of her funk and get her you know, like it was just like it was it was a really good relationship between the two of them it was really mm -hmm. you know it, it, it reminded me a lot of you know like what what two best friends would be like yeah mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. It, and that, I really liked that, and and that's what I liked about the book in general. Is the characters had a depth and an interest to them, where you could actually picture them as being people in your real life. Even even uh, Lena and Hades, yeah, together were were kind of like that, you know, over yeah, time. Yeah. Like they, they, it was and kind they, of like they were best friends growing together. Yeah, and the thing that I liked about plus them, sex appeal, which yeah. was oh, great. Absolutely. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But the thing that I liked about them is that. Every aspect of the relationship outside of the whole weird god slash goddess in Hades, you know, tending souls, uh, was actually a realistic aspect to a real relationship. They could have been any man or woman, you yeah. know. Take it was, away it was a god and goddess. Well yeah, take away the god and goddess, like, uh, labels on them. They could be any man or woman in a yeah. very beautiful romantic relationship. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what I don't know what we're on to next, but I just I have guess to say I, I really love the way the world was built. <laughs> do, do you? I yeah. I read it and I was like, oh, this is a slightly different. This is a slightly different underworld, but it's mostly the same, and I just like knew what was happening. I I had recently read, or like three or four or five months back, had read um, another Percy Jackson ish novel okay. that was pretty much set entirely in the underworld almost completely or one half of the cast were mm -hmm. in the underworld so like when she's like I'm going up to the river the Phlegathon I'm like that's the fire one that heals you and like I just like knew everything but <laughs> like, what I, so yeah. I was like what yeah, I, I really didn't so it was a pleasant surprise for me so. Well, so it was kind of funny for me and when she was going towards the one river I was like no I know what's happening and like yeah but right. Tartarus, like, was a little bit different, like, yeah. so... We should let Alex talk. I was just going <laughs> to say, I, what I liked about it was the fact that it was all one place. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't uh, Dante's seven levels or nine levels of hell or whatever, where, yeah. it was, you know, where each part was a different, you know, was, was a different area. This was, you know, it was like, you know, going out across Canada and you end up in cities or fields or mountains or... You know, it was one large place where... I think that's how it is. I think that's yeah, how the underworld I, is usually described in Greek but mythology. But I, I liked, but I liked the, I liked the fact that there was this kind of, this, this, well, I liked, because it was all one place, I liked the idea that, you know, like I was saying in, in, in The Darkest Kiss, that there would seem to be no redemption. I liked the aspect in this book where there, yes. there was. That you had there a was, chance to move from one area to another. You as could, long as you, you learned what you needed reborn, to. You could be reborn. Yeah. 
you could move, you know, out of, you know, that that time of remorse and forgetting into a yeah. into a more of a, a pleasant, you know, heaven like place of the Elysian yeah. Fields and all like yeah. it it Yeah, you can you move know, away really... from lamentation to Elysium. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well you know, um, so... that that's actually that's just how the underworld is in Greek mythology. Like I think it was laid out a little differently than I've read in other things, but it's basically it's all one place. There are different areas still, but it's all connected, and you can get from one to the other. And usually, uh, in Elysia, there's the Isle of the Blessed, where if you die and reincarnate three times, and all three times you're good enough to get there, you can actually finally go to this island, which is like super paradise. Hmm. So. Well, I just I just like the the way that the you know the world was put together, and and yeah. you know, and I'm, it was well described, and you could really you could picture the different mm -hmm. gardens, you can the the, the paths and mm -hmm. and the, the fields of trees. I I found the um, obsession with uh, the narcissus flower a little annoying at times. A little narcissistic, isn't it? Yeah, just a touch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and, and I don't. I've not heard of that flower having anything to do with it before. So I, I love I the know. description. I love the description of the stars <laughs> and uh, you know and uh, and the trees and and like just it was really really well put together. It was just really enjoyable. Mm -hmm. You you just reminded me of a thing that I kind of wanted to do for fun at the end. Gem all. So. Oh okay. Um, yeah, no, yeah, I'm in agreement with you, that's <laughs> Um, so. I'm going to bring that up on another thing. So let's yeah. move on to the sexy times, I guess? There, there wasn't a huge amount, like, there was and there mm -hmm. wasn't, right? There was the scenes within the, um, within the forge. Yeah, those definitely had some. some those were more foreplay. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think there was only really one time where they actually had sex, and it wasn't described. It was more like a. It, it was it was more like a, a a bit of a kiss and tell, but without the detail. Yeah, I think the lead which up to I it was liked, bigger. Yeah, uh, which I liked actually, because that's generally the way I like my romance books is the you can kind of picture what happened in your mind, but you don't have to hear all the gory details of it in, mm -hmm. or read you know, all the gory details of it in text. Yeah, you don't um, need to. You don't need to read about all the fluids. Yeah, yeah. we don't need sound like, effects described. Yeah. Um, like, so I, I some really, books have too many fluids. Um, I really, I really did like that. Um, you know, it's, it, it doesn't doesn't make for as nice a layback in the covers with a glass of wine type read, um, but it does uh, it does make for a more enjoyable story in all when you when you're not focused on these these specific you know four or five paragraphs on such and such chapter where the two characters really go at it and the rest of the time is just kind of backstory leading up to that. Or you know more story leading up to the next time. So I really I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I liked I liked that there was like a, a bit of it like a tenderness or you know like and then and then even though like the afterwards and she was like bruised or or tired or whatever, you know. Um, It was it was okay because she was like no this is good it's like <laughs> it's like after you ride a horse or whatever like it was just saddle sores so what? Yeah. <laughs> right like it, it was kind of like that and she's like it's okay I'm happy you didn't hurt me like it was yeah that was fun um you don't need to own a pearl. <laughs> Okay, are are we done with sexy times? Is that already over? I'm confused. I I don't think, I think there's a lot else. Like, yeah, you know what? I'm not so much into this book for sexy times as I am more for the, the actual story like the, 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 the story, the emotional. Mm -hmm. like, oh the, wow, the emotional development to that were amazing. Yeah, because for me, like that the blacksmith scene when it was just starting up, like that was really like that had me. Yeah, almost, okay, right? those. Like, 
those were the tension, right? Like the tension. Yeah, like the sexual tension. Like that, that was, was exciting. so good. Yeah, that was exciting. Um, but it's only a small part of like the satisfaction I got out of this book, which was oh, more cool. like the development of the relationship and you know the love and between. And the crying the at the end when she yes, comes back. Yes, and the crying yeah, at the end. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. No, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you or about it. Or, I don't know. It's, well, not at you. It's definitely okay, not at I'm you. I'm sorry, but it's just it is a very no. I'm not uh, laughing at you. It's a very touching. Very touching. Very touching. Happy, happy touching that you enjoyed it so much. Mm-hmm. That's like, I, have you I'm guys laughing. seen? Have you guys seen the movie Fifty Fifty? I no. I was giddy with joy, and that was where the laugh was coming from. Okay. Yeah. But Fifty Fifty. No, I've heard of it though. It's, okay. Yeah. If, if you watch, it was described to me, I've actually seen the movie since this, but it was described to me last weekend, a friend of mine, um, I was talking talking with her about it at, um, at a pub, and we were talking just movies in general, and you know, our top ten favorites in that, and she said 50-50, and I went, wait a second, I, I, like, I, I recognize the name, and she said, yeah, Seth Rogen, this and that, and I went, wait, is that the one where the friend has cancer? She's like, yeah, yeah, that's the one. I said, okay, she says, if you do not cry during that movie, you are a horrible human being. Um, and it is one of those movies where it, it it really is very heartwarming. It's one of those where as you're as you're watching it, you just you 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 tear up because of just the way the movie is done, and just because of the story and everything else. And this was the same thing, right? You're reading the story and you fall in love with the characters because they're so real, and the situation is so possible regardless of the god gods and goddesses and Hades and whatever else. That when you get to that end. And he says that phrase, our, our, our prin- uh, was it our princess or our queen of, queen of the underworld is back and here to stay forever or whatever else. you just like, mm-hmm. oh, it's, it's the proper ending to the story. Mm-hmm. And you know that, and it, it's not one of those Hollywood endings because mm-hmm. she grew to 80 plus years old, passed away, and ended up in Hades. That's where you're going to end up when you pass away at 80 years old. So it was just a natural you know, end of the story. It was, but it was just so perfect anyway. So, anyway, mm-hmm. that's just my, my, uh, mm-hmm. um, um, another thing I'll add into justification this book. of crying. Yeah. <laughs> another thing I'll add into this book, and this is just like, I guess, I don't know if it's a style thing or whatever, but, um, uh, just the way that you can read it, like, it's technically the second book in the series. But you can actually read it probably as a standalone. Like I, I did not feel like I had to read the first book because the first I, book deals with a completely different myth. Uh, part I, I of didn't the at all. Mythology. It, it, it made me wonder what, yeah. what gods or goddesses were in the other novels, well, and whether or not book, they were even Greek, and like who would be switching with them, or if it would even be the same kind of idea so, at all. I know that the first book, just because it's in this compilation that I have, it's called Goddess of the Sea, so it actually deals more with, like, the Undine, with the goddess Gaia? Gaia, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it deals more that with... That doesn't make really sense. Mermaids. Gaia's not a goddess, and... That's what it says here, the goddess Ga- Gaia? G-A-E-A. Yeah, that's the Greek spelling for Gaia. Okay. The A-I-A is the Roman spelling. Okay. Actually, that was that was one thing in this book that was a little bit odd. That she was Italian, but she was calling on Greek gods. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 that was that was weird for me too. And then yeah. and then sometimes there was the Roman spellings of stuff instead of because a, a lot of us in English speaking co- countries are more familiar with the Roman spelling anyhow. Mm-hmm. And like we're more we're more uh, familiar with Hercules as being Zeus's son, but his name in Greek is actually Heracles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, which means glory of Hera, which is a funny name because Hera absolutely hated him because yeah. he was just <laughs> sleeping around with a mortal woman instead of her. So, yeah. Hera's not. Hera wasn't a very likable goddess, was she? No. 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 Okay. She kind of hated everyone. Yeah. She yeah. Was she very tends. Bitter. It, 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 it tends to seem that way usually. Yeah. Okay. She's the bitter married woman. Mm, okay. Yeah. Or like Zilla in her own way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. The original Bridezilla or something. Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. No, but Gaia is in Gaia is like okay, so there's the Greek gods on Olympus, then uh 
Kinda above them are the tight. Then above them are the Titans. Yeah. And then Gaia gave birth to the Titans. Yeah. The Orinos, the universe. I don't know. I haven't read this. So that's one. really bizarre. And Undines are like not even. They're just mythological they're creatures. Mermaids, they're not yeah. even. Well, they're this not one. Even, is, yeah. And this one. Interestingly it's, enough. Sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, like, in, in this one, it says so. The main heroine, she's an Air Force sergeant, uh, and she okay. crashes. Her plane crashes into the ocean, and she awakens in a legendary, a legendary time and place ruled by magic in the body of the mythical mermaid Undine. So, this Air oh, so Force maybe captain gets turned into Undine a mermaid. Maybe they're saying the first mermaid. Yeah, and taking pity on her, the goddess Gaia turns her into a damsel so that she might seek shelter on the land. But then when a dashing knight comes to her rescue, she instead aches for the sea and the darkly seductive merman who's stolen her heart. So there's other mermaids and mermen there already, which she, I guess, I'm guessing anyway. I haven't read it yet. I actually do plan to read it because I, you know, would like to actually see what, you know, see what more, more of this... Uh, author's writing because I really enjoyed Goddess of Spring a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Anyway. Okay. Yeah. I'm just reading what you have here. I'm yeah, sure. Poseidon had a bunch of daughters in the ocean called Nereids, and I might have okay. spelled it wrong. And those are the those are the people that are kind of like mermaids, but I think that, I don't remember if they have legs or not. And one of them is, um, you know, when you have an Achilles heel. Mm -hmm. Achilles was a dot was a son of a Nereid. Oh, okay. So she's like, and there's like 66 of them, or 60 of them, or like Poseidon had lots of them, and He's, one of them he was a busy man. named in the Iliad is the one that dipped Achilles in the in the sticks to make him invulnerable. Oh, okay. And that's why his heel is his one vulnerable place because she was holding him by it. Holding him by his heel. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, enough about Greek mythology. Let's hey, talk Greek about gemology. What? Greek, Greek mythology is cool. I, I know. That's why I studied it in university because I enjoyed it. Some, I enjoyed it a lot. But uh, but anyway, um, they also had gemology in the book. Yes, which I thought was I interesting. Mm -hmm. It was like like this is the amethyst. I have amethyst in this room because it's calming and stuff. It, it's I don't protective. Remember. It will protect you or something like that. And then right? and then he wanted he's like maybe I should wear ruby because I'm too afraid of like even talking to her. I should I should start wearing some more ruby. But he never wore ruby. No. I was like I was waiting to see him like with a ruby ring on the next time like they were having. You're gonna their start next looking talk. like Mr. T. <laughs> well, I think it's just a ring, a single ring. No, but he's I thought like he'd be like adorning himself covered oh. in jewelry, right? <laughs> So he could actually talk to her because he's that yeah. nervous? Yeah, that would have no. been cute. That would have been really cute. That would have been cute and a little overdone, but that would have been right. cute. Or he could have had, like, ruby candlesticks or something, like, just, like, at the table the next time they talked. But, yeah. So I, I wanted to go through all of ours and what our month's birthstones mean. But oh, it's hard because a couple of us have multiple birthstones. Yeah, that's yeah. true. We actually... Yeah. Yeah. Both. Three three out of four of us have multiple birth stones. Yeah. Yeah. But two of you have the same. Yes. Yeah. So let's start with Andrea with Garnet. Okay. Um, I I don't know if there it might be there might I'll just check and see if there is another one or I'm not according to the webpage I'm on. I'm oh okay. actually yeah, I've never seen anything then. other than Garnet. Yeah, I think it's just just garnet then. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I actually looked up a gemology web website. Yeah, uh, I'm looking I'm at the Mountain Gem Society here. I'm at crystalcure.com, so we can compare notes. Okay. Where is G in the alphabet? Dang it! There you yeah. are. I'll put the okay. link to mine in the chat here as well. Oh, this is buy it, buy it, buy it. Uh, what is it good? Heal healing properties of garnet. It's a stone, uh, according to this crystal cure, it's a stone of purity and truth, as well as a symbol of love and compassion. The information mm -hmm. released in, in a search may be painful, but it will always be what the searcher needs. Mm -hmm. The garnet will help everyone's security level and the spiritual awareness. It can help increase the sex drive. Okay. This one says uh, it signifies eternal friendship and trust and is the perfect gift for a friend. Uh... It is derived, garnet is derived from the word granatum, which means seed, and is called so because of the gemstone's resemblance to a pomegranate seed. 
Hmm. Interesting. Okay. And refer uh, dates back to as early as 3100 BC. Yep. Okay, so you're looking at the same website. American Gem yeah. Society. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And the Egyptians used garnets as inlays jewelry. Okay. June okay. actually has three. Yeah, I saw. Mo website. Yeah, Moonstone. Yeah. Moonstone as well. Okay, yeah. so which one do we want to start with for June? Uh, yeah. we let's, let's start with Alexandrite for Alex. There you okay. go. So I'm going to see if I can find that. Here it is. I got it. Apparently, it's relatively modern. It was uh, discovered in 1831 in Russia. Well, I'm trying to find its healing properties, but uh, let's see. Uh, the one thing I have about it is it says Alexandrite is said to stimulate pleasure and love. It is also used as a lucky ooh. stone. Pleasure and love, interesting. To perfect stimulate. For, perfect for our, uh, our, our book club here. Yes. <laughs> There you go. And it's also used as a lucky stone. Um, yes. What was the next June one? Uh, pearl. Pearl or moonstone. Pearl? Yeah. Lucky. I'm interested in pearl. The one for the American Gem Society is not, well, it's not not as interesting in terms of its uh, talking about um, what it signifies. Oh, no, I, Just, I was looking specifically for gemology when I was... Okay. Yeah, when I was Googling. Yeah. Um, this is what it says about pearls. It stimulates spiritual transformation, promotes prosperity and success, hmm. encloses you with an aura of calm and beauty, hmm. helps with stomach digestion and emotional stress, amplifies focus, meditation skills, and wisdom, and also helps balance your solar plexus chakra. Hmm. Okay, then. Hmm. I should wear pearls more often. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what that's for. And then moonstone. Mm -hmm. Or is it mood? Did you say mood or moon? Moon. Uh, L M N O. There we go. Ah, uh, it is said if you give your lover a moonstone necklace when the moon is full, you will always have passion with each other. So not a pearl necklace. Moonstone is a highly valued gemstone for these reasons. It brings good fortune. It assists in fortune telling the future. Uh, it enhances intuition. It promotes. Insp it's supposed to promote inspiration. It brings success in love as well as as well as business matters, and offers protection on land and at sea. Uh, the most powerful time to use the moonstone is in a full moon. It's associated with the goddess Diana. It says it can reunite lovers who have quarreled. It's also considered a good luck stone. There's a lot on the moonstone. Nice. It's. Like, super long. Uh, it's a particularly good gemstone for women. It's a good stone for young women or teenagers. Um, it's used by healers to stimulate the functioning of the pineal gland and balance internal hormone cycles with, the nature, with nature's rhythms. Hmm. So I guess if you're not regular... <laughs> I, don't I know. generally don't put have to worry about that. Put myself. your cycles back on track. There you go. Yeah, and maybe that's why it's especially good for young women and teenagers. Yeah. Um, though often never... considered to be a woman's stone, it can be beneficial to men in opening the emotional self. Oh, yeah, I don't care for opening my emotional self, but thank you. <laughs> that's that's uh, the last thing it has to say that isn't. That's gemology ish. Okay. So that then... would be that. And then and opal. Then yours is um, then for opal. me for October. What do you have for opal over there? I've never seen opal before. That's the first I've heard of opal. Uh, the name opal derives from the Greek opalos, to, meaning to see a change of color. Opals, ra opals range in color from milky white to black, with flashes yeah. of yellow, orange, green, red, and blue. This one has a bunch of different opals, and I can click on all of them individually. I normally see October as anything pink, which is why I know there's it's rose zircon and oh, tourmaline. tourmaline. Yeah. So I'm going to look at pink opal specifically because I imagine that's probably the October one. And I always hated it because I don't like pink. <laughs> so I what? never liked my gemstone. You don't like pink? No. You're such a pink type person to me, though. Purple. 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 Royal, Ooh, let's not go into color. Let's not go into color stuff right now because purple. purple is not a good one for you. I'm curious why you say that. <laughs> Apparently, I've been told 
that apparently uh, people who like the color purple are sexually repressed. <laughs> oh well, that oh that's true, but I can't see that being I, I except I can't I don't know if that would be true of one of my good friends from high school who also really loved purple. I think people who like purple just happen to like the color purple, but that's apparently that's what uh, that's uh, there's a whole thing. Well, on in it. my case, it's probably very true, I, I <laughs> and that's the most well. detail you'll get on that subject for now. Um, pink opal, it says is noted for its energies and healing emotions. Sleeping with it or holding it in meditation brings compassion and a gentle resolution of painful memories. Uh, it's said to be many things. Oh, just regular opal in general. The opal is said to be many things, including the most powerful of healing stones, the stone of hope, the stone of great achievement, and even the stone of the gods. Ancient Romans associated opal with hope and good luck. Uh, and it's it's good for healing emotions. Okay, that's that's good. pink opal. Um, is rose zircon on here? R R L M N O P R. Red something quartz, rose quartz. Maybe I'm thinking of rose quartz, not rose zircon, because that's not there. Yeah, I'm thinking of rose quartz. Uh, your marriage can have more sparkle and fire when you keep a rose quartz under your pillow. You will look younger, too. It's known as the love stone. It helps the user feel a strong sense of self-worth, self therefore being worth love. It's a lot of stuff to do with love. It has a gentle vibration of love. It gives inner peace to all matters pertaining to love. It helps a rejuvenator to the skin. That's kind of strange. It's a lovely stone for a young person. It, it's all love, 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 love. All the love. things to do with love. Lots of love. Lots of love. I'm not, it, it's long. Love. I'm not going to read it all. And pink tourmaline. Um, P. It's not on this website. Aww. Maybe it's tea for tourmalines. Oh, oh, it's separate. It's under tea. Pink tourmaline is an emotional balancer and cleanser. Alleviates stress and obsessive behavior. Oh, I need this. Assists in changing <laughs> patterns to better align with spiritual growth. Radiates kindness and tolerance. Use with rose quartz, it says. Combine it with... Yeah. So it's relaxing, nurturing, and is associated with feminine energies. Feminine energy. So Has I don't the need potential any of that to heal energy. emotional wounds. Bring feelings of comfort and safety. So it's, it's an emotional balancer mostly, and it alleviates stress and obsessive behavior the most. I think that's what it looks like it does the most. It's very, very nice. I'm just looking at color theory here, real quick. Okay. Light purple. Not that. Not not a huge fan of that one. Evokes romantic and nostalgic feelings. Dark purple evokes gloom and sad feelings. It can cause frustration. What about bright purple? That in between, bright royal. Uh, purple combines the stability of blue and the energy of red. Purple is associated with royalty. It symbolizes power, nobility, luxury, and ambition. It conveys wealth and extravagance. It is often associated with wisdom, dignity, independence, creativity, mystery, and magic. Uh, almost 75% of children prefer purple to all other colors. I don't believe that from my own childhood, but okay. Hmm. Not sure. in my sample group. Anyone else? <laughs> uh, blue? Okay, that's the same one as me, so that makes it simple. Uh, blue is the color of sky, and sea is often associated with depth and stability. It symbolizes trust, loyalty, wisdom, confidence, intelligence, faith, truth, and heaven. Hmm. Blue is considered beneficial to the mind and body. It slows human metabolism and produces a calming effect. Blue is strongly associated with tranquility and calmness. In heraldry, blue is used to symbolize piety and sincerity. Uh, you can Most of that... It must be why I like blue bedrooms. Um, mm -hmm. You can use blue to promote products and services relating to cleanliness, air and sky, water and sea, uh, linked to consciousness and, intelligent, and intellect. Apparently it's a masculine color. Oh. 
Uh, dark blue is associated with depth, expertise, and stability. It is preferred color for corporate America. Um, do, uh, when used together with warm colors like yellow, yellow or red, blue can create high impact, vibrant designs. Uh, interesting. This is like a mix color theory symbolism and color theory uh, advertising site. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, uh, you, what does it say about light blue? Uh, it doesn't actually. Oh, light blue is associated with health, healing, tranquility, understanding, and softness. Oh, okay. Dark blue represents knowledge, power, integrity, and seriousness. Okay. Andrea, what's yours? Uh, oh, black or green? Black. Black's black is associated face. with power, elegance, formality, death, evil, and mystery. Ooh. Is a mysterious color associated with fear and the unknown. It usually has negative connotations. Blacklist, black humor, black death. Uh, it denotes strength and authority. It is considered to be a very formal, elegant, and prestigious color. Uh, in heraldry, it's the symbol of grief. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, yeah. And apparently, black suit or dress can make you look thinner. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you go. Under red is pink. Pink signifies romance, love, and friendship. It denotes feminine qualities and passiveness. How is you passiveness think passive? feminine qualities, damn it? You, wait, wait, wait. So, so why do you think pink fits me, Alex? Why do you think <laughs> I, I don't. I'm passive now? Come no, on. I, was just I, don't think... about, I was just thinking about the fact that I don't think I've ever seen you wear anything pink at all. So... No, I just I find it funny that they say it denotes feminine qualities and then pa and then matches that with passiveness and I've never really considered mm. passiveness a feminine quality. It isn't my sister's case, but I I, I think that has more. That's a with... personal quality. It's not a feminine yeah. quality because yeah. I know way too many rambunctious and uh, active and go-getter type women, so I can't imagine mm. passiveness being a feminine quality. No. I know too many guys who are passive. Yeah, so. guys are passive, actually, in a lot of ways. Although although a lot of women are passive-aggressive. Mm. At times. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, is, any last words anyone wants to say before we go? Uh, no, I just... So I, we're going to read this? Enjoy. Oh, yeah, what are we I, reading next? I, I, I don't know. Neither one of them particularly grabbed me, but if they grab both Daughter, of you... Daughter of the Forest is really good. I'm about halfway through, and I am enjoying it very, very yeah. much. Yeah, that one? It is some really long chapters, I have to it, warn you. It, it seems too high pages. fantasy for my usual reads. It's, it's a little over 500 pages. I'm halfway through. I'm on chapter 7. So they're very, very long they're chapters. Very long. Yeah, I'm on chapter two still. But the two of you are still. liking it so far? Yes, yeah, so it far I'm really enjoying very, it. very, very good book. The characters uh, are really well, um, really well described, and they interact really well. So you get a good understanding of of their own personality traits and their and and the way they interact with each other and the person and and the, the types of relationships they have with each other. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's a really interesting take on fairy tales. I'd like oh, to I didn't realize it had anything like to do with fairy tales. Hmm? Yeah. What? I said I didn't realize it had anything to do with fairy tales. Yeah, the whole the whole idea of it is she took the the, the classic fairy tale of the uh, of the Swan Princess and made a, a story about it, taking but completely trashing the the original Swan Princess story and turning it into something completely different. That's what this book is. Mm-hmm. Oh, I but didn't see anything oh, to do with swans in the in the Goodreads thing. Yeah, swans, you have right? to read really deep. There's swans right on the cover. You have to read really deep into the description of it. But where I was reading after I started reading the book and going, well, what is this actually about? Because I don't know what the heck is going on. I started doing some some research on the book, and that's where I read that it was that the reason why it was written was she uh, she got into I guess into like a fairy tale type phase and decided she was going to write an alternative fairy tale in a novel type thing, and that's where this came from. 
Okay. So it's 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 quite good. It's really 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 good, and uh, the um, it's not so far that I can tell. It's not a, a super heavy romance book, but the characters are definitely very enjoyable, and it's not it's not Tolkien type fantasy where people go on 500 pages of walking. Like it, there is actually some real good story behind it. Um. Andrea, what do you think? Which one are you more excited about? Well, I've I read I read Deerskin. Um, I'm gonna make myself sound really old. I read Deerskin 20 years ago. Um, wow, and you're I, old. I, I, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> so you read it when you were nine, right? Yeah, that's right. When I was nine, and I thought it was great. No, I um, I, <laughs> I really do. I remember liking it. I'm I'm I would like to read it again, actually. And in fact, I'd be really really interested because I I still have very strong thoughts about from when I read it, you know, all those years ago. So I'm interested to read it now and see if I rem if it if it is the way I remember it, or if um, it lives up to your your yeah exactly. Way. And and Alex is really selling me on the other one, so I'm I'm. Uh, so you, you you think you want to read both? For, yeah, I, I'm gonna try to read both this month. I just I have a bit of a crazy schedule at the moment, um, but I'm gonna try to read both. All right, all right. Then I'm not gonna make the suggestion that I was gonna make. Which was. Which was going to be to like, do we want to read just one and read my friend's book as an alt? Because we all downloaded that like a month or two ago. I have, I, I definitely have enough time to put a third book in because I'm already halfway through this one and the month's barely started. So. Yeah, I'll see what I, I can do. It's a bit I won't have time for a third book. I, I, can, I don't I think I'm going to have time. I don't think I'm going to have time for a third book. But I'm also yeah. not particularly interested in either of the two books. But you two, but you're all gung ho about. The three of the, the two of them together. So. Oh, well, I'm uh, definitely, I'm definitely really thing. enjoying this one. I yeah. guess we'll start with the daughter of the forest, and then oh. see yeah. see how that goes. Because I also have Dragonfly and Amber sitting there, and it's been waiting for me to be reading it. I, I started reading it like two months ago, and then suddenly we had good books in our book club, and so I yeah. didn't get back to it. I got maybe 20, 30 pages in. Well, that's my problem too. I'm reading about seven or eight other books at the same time as I'm doing all this, oh, no. and I'm also reading a brain book right now. That's interesting, I and I only have like six days left before it gets deleted from my phone because I took it out of the library. Ooh. Congrats, Alex. I'm just gonna skate and type it. <laughs> anyway, I guess that's it. So we're gonna read the two books that were picked. Sure. Sounds and good. then I guess um, I guess maybe if we hit like one to two weeks away from when we're usually gonna do this again, and everybody finished reading, then maybe we might start my friend's book. But only if we're all done and we've said so on the forum. Okay. All right. Otherwise, well, read something else. <laughs> I will update the forum as soon as I've finished the second book. Who knows when that'll be? Because this one's taking me longer than usual. I'm usually I usually power through these books within about 48 hours, but this one's taken me close to a week now, and I'm only about halfway through, so. Okay. But I also have right. been reading as much as, late, as usual, so. I'm reading way less than usual. I haven't Terrible. read a lot. Terrible. In a long time. You should feel bad about yourself. Except when I read all of uh, A Night of Cake and Puppets in pretty much two days. You still? I will tell her. I will tell her. Okay. Same um, with me, by the way. Oh, crap. I, I will tell her you that that always, didn't work uh, out. Yeah, you could let her know. Ask okay. Emily as well. Yeah. Okay, I will, I will do that. I will get on that tomorrow afternoon. Okay. When you have some sleep in you and hopefully yes. wake up again from the uh, conk on the head. Yeah. Okay, hopefully wake up. <laughs> Actually, I'm starting to feel better. I started feeling better maybe 20, 30 minutes ago. That's good. So, That's finally, solid. after all this time. Um, so, yeah. So, let's meet again next month, and mm -hmm. hopefully uh, I am more on top of the forum than I was this month. Yeah, and no worries. We got it done. Yeah, yeah, we did. We did. I'm really glad that you jumped in there, because I, otherwise I would have forgotten. I might not. It might have been next week otherwise. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Thank you yep. for watching. Good night, everyone. Good night, Emily. Bye. Good night. Bye, Emily. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do.